to show you guys how to uh, create methods using NetBeans where you don't have to do the code and it'll create uh, getters, setters, equals, hash, to string. Some of the common methods that every class would need. As you can see, I created a class called cat. Let me clean it up just a little here. And I've created three uh, properties of cat. We got name, or four, I'm sorry, name, color, type, and the age. The first thing you might want to do in any, uh, any class is create a uh, constructor. So go down to the white space down here, right click on it, go down to insert code. Now another menu pops up. We're going to go ahead and select constructor. It's the top one, or should be the top one. Now let's not check any of these boxes. We'll just hit generate. Now we've created a blank constructor that doesn't have any uh, input. We can now remember in Java you can have more than one constructor. So let's right click on the white space below that instructor, constructor, insert code, do another constructor. But this time, let's check name. Then we'll hit generate. Now we have a constructor that takes in the name of the cat when it's being constructed and stores it in name. Now that's useful but we still can't from another method or from a main method in another object touch color type or int because if you notice they're private. Well we go down to our white space here again right click go down to insert code. Now there's getter, setter, getter and setter. You wanted to click getter and setter in this particular case. The getter would be the methods that allow you to get the objects, the, var the variable stored for that object. The setter allows you to set the object. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and choose getter and setter and I'm going to go ahead and choose the cat at the top. Now you could select individually which ones you want to do if you didn't want to have all variables be able to be accessed in this method. You can encapsulate them if you wanted and I'm going to just hit generate and if you notice a whole bunch of code just generated and a real simple methods but it's a get and a set for each of these here so like if we look for color we have where is it there they are uh, get color and set color so now if we were in another object and we had declared a cat we could say cat dot get color or cat dot set color now other methods that a lot of times people like to add as a two string. You want to overload the two string. Well, if you go down to your white space, right click, go down to insert code, and then select two string. Now, if you notice, all of these are checked, but let's say we only wanted the type and the name to be two string. We didn't care about the color of the age. We could just uncheck those two and just have name and type checked. Now we'll hit generate. Notice that it automatically did the override for us and then created our return that two strings, just the variables we told it to string. Now we can furthermore change if we wanted to, you know, spiffy up our two string by instead of having an equals, put a colon and, you know, change that. So, I mean, we can, we can modify it from there, but it gives us the base to start. Um, another common uh, task people like to do is uh, modify equals and hash, and they should almost always be modified together. Uh, now a simple way to start that is to just right click this again, go down to insert code. Notice I went down to the white space before I did this, and we have a choice, equals and hash code. We'll click that. Now another box pops up. Now this you should almost always, I can't think of an instance where I wouldn't, have, if a box is checked on this side, make sure the same box is checked on that side, because you want your hash code and equals to theoretically be the same. Um, in this case, we're going to say that two cat objects would be the same if their color, type, and name are equal. We are going to say that the age does not matter in whether or not we reference a cat as being equal. So we selected those three on both sides and hit generate. Let's go back up. Let's start by looking at our hash. If you notice, it overrode it for us, created the method, and then created a hash code for us based on those variables right here. We didn't have to do any of that code. All that thought process was done for us. That's always kind of nice. 
We also did the same thing for an equals. We'll go through this real quick. It, it overrode the equals method. And the first thing it did is if it says the object coming in is null, return false because obviously null can't be equal to something else. Then it goes through if the class is not equals to the other class being you know implied versus ex implicit. It says it's false because obviously a cat is not equal to a dog. Um, then we then we casted the cat as final. Let's say in this object coming in, we're casting as a cat. Then it returns. Uh, let's look, see. It says if objects dot equal this name and other names. So basically, if the objects names don't match, return false. If the objects colors don't match, return false. If the objects type doesn't match, return false. And if it gets through all of those tests, then it'll return true. Otherwise, if any one of those fails, it returns false, which is kind of neat because we didn't have to logically think out how that did. In fact, I had just read it for the first time and I had to think about what it was doing because I just auto-generated it. I didn't have to think about creating my, uh, my code for this. So that's how you create some standard methods very quickly, so you don't have to type all of this. I mean, we just created, you know, about 85 lines of code, and, you know, I could have probably done it in about 30 seconds. Thank you, and I'll have more videos later.